Give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime. Sharon Hornell's from here. It's the only fish I have in the house is fish, fish dishes, fish bowl, fish cups. And of course, I didn't think to have my fish cup today. I've got my heart cup. But let's talk about this expression. It's it's turned around and it's said in different ways. It's expressed by comedians. It's used to describe other things, you know. But usually, I've heard give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man a fish, feed him for a lifetime. Or some version of that and the message of course is that when we do something for someone we might help them out in the very short term or immediately but are we maybe hurting them or harming them in the long term because we're not helping them to be self-sufficient teaching them how they can do it themselves too this is an idiom and an expression that's been around since Lao Tzu it's from a Chinese uh, proverb and the founder of Taoism was Lao Tzu and he is the one that said, of course, in Chinese, a very similar version to this, this proverb, this philosopher, he was a philosopher, a Chinese philosopher. The oldest one in English was from Anne Isabella, let's see if I can get her name right, Anne Isabella, I thought her, I don't know, thought her or Thatchery, Thatchery, Richie, that's it. I can't even remember. It's like Anne Ritchie is what I remember because I used to know an Anne Ritchie. So I'm like, okay, I can remember that. But she wrote a novel called Mrs. Diamond in 1885. That's the first time that it appeared in writing in English and in its current form, right? The give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach a man to fish, and you, he eats for a lifetime or you feed him for a lifetime or whatever, any version of that. Now, this, this idiom is near and dear to my heart. I don't know if I ever have said to anybody, teach me. I may have said a short version, you know, eat a, you know, give a man a fish or teach a man to fish. I might have said like just the shortened version of that, meaning the whole expression in a situation. But I don't think I've ever said the whole thing except for on this idiom uh, and on this Supersize Your Business episode to actually use the entire phrase. It's a long one. So most of the time we find shortened versions of it. But Think of all the examples of this in our life, in our, our whole life, in our personal experience in life, and in how we grow and build our businesses. If we hoard all of the knowledge and the wisdom that we have, and we don't teach anybody how to do anything or things in our business, guess what that means? We have to do everything ourselves. Not very fun, often exhausting, and probably not the most effective use of all of our time and energy is doing everything ourselves. But if we bring people on and we show them how to do something, we teach them. My friend uh, uh, Bernard, get, uh, was it yesterday or the day before, did a great video about the levels of delegation and how when we give people opportunities to practice and learn and be responsible for different processes and procedures in our organization, it encourages them to grow and take on more responsibility and do things on their own, show initiative, and also frees us up from having to make all the decisions and tell everybody what to do. I don't know about you, did that in my youth, but it wasn't that fun. It got exhausting trying to do everything myself. So I learned that I could do everything myself and be exhausted and, and feel sorry for myself and complain, or I could figure out how to teach other people how to do things. I taught my, we, we do this with our children all the time. We teach our children how to walk and to talk and to uh, communicate so that they can get on in life. Why would we do anything less for the people that are a part of our organization, especially our hires? I mean, I can see where sometimes you wouldn't want to share confidential information or things that you've spent years learning and tricks and strategies that you've learned that make you unique and special with your competition, if you believe in competition, or with uh, vendors or peers or other organizations that might use it to at their competitive advantage to your competitive disadvantage. But when it comes to the people that are part of your organization, the people that you bring onto your team, you have to teach them how to do the things that you hired them for, or you're wasting your resources, you're wasting your money, you're wasting your time and energy, which is probably time and energy is even more important than your money and your resources. You know, we teach our kids to cook so that they, we don't have to make absolutely every single meal for them. We teach them how to dress themselves. We teach them how to do math and, and school. And we teach them how to do things so that they can get along with other people, so they can get along in the world. And we need to do the same thing when somebody new comes into our organization. We need to make sure that we have got training systems, that we've got, number one, processes and procedures and systems that other people can follow. And if we, if we don't have those things, if we're a sole proprietor and 
I work with a lot of, of entrepreneurs and sole proprietors and as they're making that transition from doing it all themselves to adding people, it's really important that they document or I love video, use videos to, to show people and walk people through exactly how I do something. Then I hand it off to them. I'm like, all right, watch this video, see what you get, come back with questions and let's walk through it. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take what I have created and I want you to add your unique skill set and make it even better. We want to have a continually improving system for our business and for our organization so that it will grow. And it grows on everyone's skills, bringing all of their skills to the table, not just little pieces of it or me dictating and telling them how things need to be done or should be done. Uh, so training systems, having training, teaching people how to do things, however you do that, having systems and processes and procedures that are there for everybody to learn on so we get consistent results and then adopting an, a, a philosophy of continuous improvement for not just me but for everyone in the organization so everyone is always contributing in a positive way to make the company better so that we can serve customers and the world better love to know your experience with this particular uh, expression this idiom I I don't know very many business people that I come in contact with that have not at least heard a version of this expression, a version of this proverb, uh, and, and know exactly what it means to them as well as to the people that they interact with on a daily basis. So I'd like to know your version of it, your stories that you have about, you know, people, we've all got stories of, of uh, people that we worked with. In corporate America, it happened more than in my own businesses because sometimes other people had influence in and a, a say in who we hired and didn't hire for different areas in business areas of the business. But when it came to my own business, is I made sure people were a match and that they were self-starters and they would ask questions and they would take initiative and they would do things. You know, I could give them here's the result we want, and I could say go, go do it, go off, spread your wings, figure it out. You know. And if, you, if you're a little worried, come back the first couple times, ask questions, and then we'll figure it out. And you'll figure out exactly how you're going to spread your wings in this organization. But in corporate America, you know, we all had that person that every single thing they needed to do, they had to come back and ask permission, ask permission, ask permission. It's exhausting. It is exhausting micromanaging people. So that's why I gave it up. I, if you haven't, I, I would encourage you to do so as well because people are smart and they're amazing and they have skills and abilities that we don't know anything about until we let them have an opportunity to show us and to demonstrate those behaviors and those skills and abilities. All right, have an amazing day. I, of course, will be back tomorrow with another interesting idiom. We're doing Proverbs for the first 100 days of the year, what they mean, where they came from, and how much you use them in your business and maybe even in your life. Have a great day.